day one of 3D printing. Hopefully we'll get to 100 days here. I'm going to push my abilities and skills at being a 3D printing journeyman. But the reason of these videos is because I couldn't quite find a place when I got started with 3D printing, where to even begin. And I got lost in this sea of options and information. And so hopefully these series of videos will help you get started from I have no clue what's going on to I could comfortably 3D print and have my own creations and designs ready to be made. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we're going to start off with the Ender 3 V2. It really doesn't matter where you get it. There's a bunch of certified manufacturers or certain distributors for the Ender 3 V2. The reason we're going to use it is because this price point right here is hard to beat. It is modular 3D printer, so if you really like it, you can upgrade it so you haven't really wasted your money for being locked in with the entry-level printer. There is a ton of communities out there for the Ender 3, how to improve it, uh, troubleshooting tips, and things like that. Uh, and three, man, I just really enjoy the quality it gives for that price point. Don't believe me, let's check this out. So I've got, I've got, um, I've got this right here. We've got this Baby Yoda that we made with uh, another Ender 3 we had, uh, or at least I was out using at the time. And we were able to get pretty decent quality out of it with um, kind of a base package entry level. Now, notice that this isn't a perfect 3D print. We do have some zits right in here. And so it's not perfect, but you can see that, man, you got the ridges, the ruffleness of the coat. This weighty part texture of that coat came out really, really well. Uh, we do have a little bit of imperfections, which you could pick at. We do have some small ele elephant's foot down here at the bottom. But however, for a 3D print, um, it actually came out really good. This is probably, I was really impressed. I did get a little impatient on, uh, let's see if I can get the focus on there. And I accidentally snipped off three of Baby Yoda's fingers. Um, but that was purely my fault, not the printer's fault. Uh, but as far as the quality for the price point, this is just phenomenal. Now, this was with no upgrades. So what can we get away with once we do start to upgrade? I don't know, but we're going to find out. So let's go back. So we get the Ender 3. The price point is just phenomenal. Now, here's what I'm going to say. This. Let's ask the question, what is this for? If this is for hobbyists, and you have no clue what you want to do with 3D printing, but you know it, it piques your interest, this is where we're at. If this price point is too high for you, then probably this hobby isn't for you because just a roll of filament itself can be anywhere from 25 to 35 to 40 bucks. Uh, and so if $300 for an initial investment is just too steep, probably I would recommend you go find a different hobby because you're just going to be frustrated you're going to be locked in by the price point of not being able to do the stuff you want to do. Uh, if you are a teacher, here's kind of um, what I would say. If you're a teacher and you want to have multiple of a cheap kit, this is this is what I have in my classroom. I've got six of these uh, at any given point. Usually two to four of them are running. I'm in the process of also upgrading them. So I'm you know, when I get time, I'm calibrating, tinking, tinkering, and upgrading, but I'm able to produce stuff out of my classroom that is of high enough quality that I would even give or gift uh, to some other people. What if you have a teacher that has a little bit more of a budget? There is the next upgrade, which is the original Prusa I Mark III. Now, this printer is really good. Print comes in about $1,000, um, but it is USA made. It's got a couple of features that allow for more reliable prints, a little bit better quality. Um, but for me, man, that thousand dollars is steep because I could get three under threes for the one price here. If you got the budget for it and you want less maintenance, higher quality, uh, just a little bit higher quality, um, this is kind of good for you. What if you have a lot of wiggle room in your budget? 
and then you can kind of go for what's called a PhD or push here dummy 3D printer. Uh, and the Dremels 3D45s tend to be okay here. I'm not too happy with how they work because for this $1,800 price point, or anywhere from $1,400 to $1,800, I just think that's really steep for what it's offering. It just hurts my heart that I could get, you know, six 3D printers up and running for this price point right here. And then the last one is the Ultimaker. Now the Ultimaker uh, is kind of like if I had no bars hold on my budget within reason, because you can get ridiculous with 3D printers. Uh, this would what I'd be go I would go with. Um, the Ultimaker is kind of like the Ferrari, um, or even like you. I would say what's the the, the Mustang convertible, you know, it is uh, the uh, quote unquote, the poor man sports car. It is how crazy can you get without getting too crazy? Uh, and that's where the Ultimaker's at. So, but notice this price point, man, that's huge. So with what I've been able to do is I said, you know what? I'm gonna figure out 3D printing. I have to do it. And so I got some Ender 3s and I fell in love with them. They are fantastic. I'm gonna do it, and we have one right. Oh, I gotta move the baby out. We have one right here, and we're gonna use it for this YouTube channel. We're gonna start with an Ender Three. We're even gonna do some upgrades, and we're gonna do stuff step by step. Now, it'll be the point where, hopefully, it'll be all the information you need from start to finish on getting a good solid product, and you don't have to spend your time. <sighs> All the frustration of failed prints upon failed prints upon failed prints upon failed prints. I think you guys get the point. Upon failed prints of tinkering and getting things right and getting things wrong. And hopefully I'll just take you through that step one by one. Now, if I haven't sold you on the Ender 3 yet, hopefully I will at some point, I guess. I don't know. But in any case, what else do we need? Well, other than the actual printer for a $300 price tag, we're going to start with a base package. We need to download a slicer. So a slicer is a program that tells your computer or tells the, the, that your computer tells the 3D printer how to print. So what it does is it's going to take your 3D file and it's going to slice it and make a bunch of different layers. And those layers are how the 3D printer works. Well, where do we get our 3D printing files from? You can either make them, and if you don't know how to make them, you got other videos in my series that on how to make 3D files, or you can pull them from online. Now, there is a little bit of controversy with Thingiverse. I haven't quite looked into it, but anyways. So this file was from Thingiverse, from uh, Marvin Miniatures, and made it online for free. Now, some of these have little caveats like, hey, this is a free thing. Don't be making money off of me. This isn't a completely free Creative Commons or it's copyrighted things. But what happens when we take something we like and we download it? We download what's called an STL file. So we, set, we found something we like. We download the STL file. We install Cura on our computer. And then we can pull that file into our, into our computer. So. The first time you open up Cura, it's going to ask, hey, what kind of printer do you have? So let's just go through this real quick. Let's uh, printer, I'm going to add a printer real quick. It's going to say, um, would you want to add a networked printer or a non-networked printer? And here's the cool thing about Cura. It's free and offers a lot of different 3D printing companies. Now, the Ender 3 is made by Creality. So it's, you know, the Creality. And we have the Ender 3 right here. Now, the only difference between the Ender 3 V2 and the regular Ender 3 is the V2 is much, much quieter. So if you do want that cheaper price point, but still in the same ballpark, you can go with the V1. However, it is loud, a lot louder than I care for it to be. Um, when I had a V1 a couple of years ago, uh, and when my door was closed and I was in a different room, trying to watch a movie and I could hear the printer going on the whole time. It was annoying, but in any case. So Ender 3, I'm going to click add it, it'll add it, and then it will automatically adjust the bed to be your print size. So this slicer then will then go through and take, okay, here's your 3D file. What do you want to do with it? 
There's a bunch of different options and we'll go through those as we go through this YouTube series. We then slice and then after we slice, we can then see what that model would look like as it's printing. And I'll go through all this rather quickly, but, and that's it. We hit save, we throw it in the Ender 3 when we're ready to print, and then we print, and then we get, you know, little baby, uh, as many baby Yodas as you want, okay? Now, I did get some pretty good success, clearly, out of this green filament roll that you kind of see in the shot as well. So, when it comes to filament, what are we going to do? Don't buy the cheap stuff. Okay. I have been frustrated with the cheap stuff. $20 is about the price, uh, the least amount I would pay for one kilogram of uh, PLA. There are a lot of decent qualities out there, and they're kind of getting better and better and better uh, as far as not creating failed prints. The only color I've been the most frustrated with is white. Something about white filaments have not been very successful for me. I haven't tested them recently because I've kind of been avoiding them. But in any case, there we go. So what are we going to do with this series? One, we're going to wrap this video up here soon because I want each video to be about 10 minutes in length. So one, we're going to build an Ender 3 V2 in the next video. And then I'm going to talk about all the bits and pieces of how they work. And then after we build it, we're going to walk through Cura, the bits and pieces of Cura, and hopefully get our first print, successful print, up and running. From there, we're going to start to do some other upgrades. We're going to do one upgrade out the gate. Um, and then from there, we're going to start to do step-by-step -step on good practices for successful 3D printing. I don't know what kind of mess we're going to get into, but all I know is, is this is hopefully a resource for you to use to help you walk through and navigate 3D printing and for you to figure it out. In any case, if these videos have been helpful, please like and subscribe. Let me know if this convinced you to buy a 3D printer. If it did, awesome. And then you can reach out to me anytime you get frustrated or stuck or you need help or whatever else you need. But in any case, I will see you guys hopefully in the next video. Take care.